hi welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here um, hope you like the video if you do give me a like and subscribe if you have any questions or comments please feel free to write anything as soon as I can see them I will comment back okay so first things first I want to apologize for the way I look I have had a horrible migraine all day today and if I ramble on a little bit I am so sorry uh, migraine brain is really bad really really bad for anyone who's ever had a migraine they'll tell you afterwards you're kind of in a fog um, but if I didn't do this today I wasn't gonna do it until like Sunday and I wanted to get the video done and over with there's a couple things I want to say before I get into the point that I wanted to make for this whole video um, first I wanted to start off by um, giving y'all an update on the on my weight I'm about to go on a, I don't want to say like a cleanse, it's a reboot for my body. Um, if any of y'all have ever heard of the Whole30, that is what I'm about to do. Uh, for those of you who haven't, basically it's just, it's a retraining for your body. You cut out a lot of foods like grains and dairy and processed foods like chips um, and you stick to a very clean eating diet. So you can have like meat and seafood and you can have fruits, veggies, and certain nuts. You can't have legumes, so no beans, no peanuts, no, um, you can't have rice, stuff like that. Um, if you want a detailed description of the diet let me know my friend Carrie sent me a link that gives you a detailed um, a link to their website which gives details everything you can and cannot have um, so I'm gonna be doing this for the next 30 days starting tomorrow July 14th um, and my starting weight with this is a hundred and seventy nine pounds I weighed myself yesterday at hundred and seventy nine pounds so I've gained one pound, gained one back. Just goes up and down, doesn't it? Um, that is why I feel a great need to do this reboot because I want to make sure that I am in this for the long haul, that I'm not just going to end up back where I was. I'm retraining my body to eat and digest healthy foods and I don't want to be stuck with this food addiction that I have. I have a horrible food addiction. So bad. If there is a bag of Hot Cheetos in this house, and I'm talking the big bag, not the little bag. If there's a big bag of Hot Cheetos in this house, I will sit here and I will watch Netflix and I will eat that bag until I hit dust at the bottom. It's so bad. Um, sorry. Text message from the husband. Um, anyway... So I'm going to be doing the Whole30. I'm going to be giving y'all updates. If you want to see the meals, you can follow me on Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And you will get to see updates of all the meals that I'm eating. Um, and a couple of little clips from like workouts and stuff like that. But it's not, I'm not taking too many pictures and stuff like that at the gym. Just because I feel other people would kind of be weirded out by it. And I don't want to make other people uncomfortable. Um, so the main point in this video, and this is going to get a little bit personal, um, I wanted to give you guys the main reasons as to why I personally feel like I want and need to lose weight. And I want you to know that these are going in reverse order. So my least important is going to be the very first one that I tell you my most important to me is going to be the very last one and the last one is going to have a lot of statistics with it so I do apologize if you don't like that kind of stuff please just try and bear with me that is a huge pimple oh that's awful sorry <laughs> um anyway Ugh. so let's go ahead and get to it shall we of course Reason number one that I'm going to give you, and there's only ten reasons, so should be over soon, ish, hopefully. Um, reason number one, to look good. My husband tells me all the time that I am beautiful the way I am. I don't have to change, 
but I don't feel the way he sees me. And I want to feel and look and see what he sees every time I look in the mirror. And I cannot do that if I don't change the way I am. And this is, this is for me, it's not for anyone else. I want to take pride in the way I look. And there's nothing wrong with that. So number two is to lower my chances of disease. And when I was re-going over my list, I feel like this should be a little bit um, higher up on my list. So it probably is, but I just kind of put it where I could. Um, so yeah, to lower chances of disease. A uh, list of diseases that are actually, your chances of getting them are increased by being uh, overweight or obese is, of course, heart problems, stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, gallbladder disease, and stones, uh, osteoarthritis, gout, and breathing problems. And none of those sound pleasant. I know cancer and heart disease and diabetes run in at least half of my family. The half of my family that I know, it runs in their side of the family. So... Yeah, I really want to avoid those. Um, number three is to reduce back pain. When I was about 21, I had a back injury from lifting contractor's tools out of a huge toolbox by myself, and I didn't wear a back brace, and I didn't lift with my knees. I bent at the waist, and I hurt myself pretty bad at work. Um, I missed a lot of work and ended up uh, on a lot of painkillers and um, to the point to where people I was loopy people had to drive me around places because I didn't know where I was going what I was doing who I was talking to at one point I remember waking up in the passenger seat of my mom's truck and one of my friends was driving me back home from her house and I don't even know why she had my mom's truck and I, I knew nothing I was just there for the ride um, and ever since then, I've noticed that because I've done a lot of fad diets and I've taken pills, pills that have caused me to just completely stop eating. And I noticed that as the weight dropped, my back felt better. But then the weight would come back because, yeah, fad diets, you lose a lot of water weight. But once you go back to eating the way you were eating, you gain all that weight back. Um, that's why, that's a big reason I want to lose the weight is so that I'm not sitting there and I'm not in pain anymore. Um, yep. I also want to just change my lifestyle. That's why I'm doing the Whole30, to change the life, my lifestyle and the way that I see food so that way I don't have to go through this back pain anymore. And I can break my food addiction and not gain all the weight back like a year after I lose it because that's how long it's taken um let's see of course to increase my energy have you ever noticed that people who have worked out their entire life they've always been healthy they've always you know eaten well they're always so happy and have so much energy and you're just like where do they find the time in the day to do all these things and still have such a great attitude. I am very, very convinced, and I'm sure there's research out there somewhere that backs this up, but I didn't find any just because I probably just didn't look. Um, I'm very convinced it has everything to do with how you treat your body, what you put in it, what you do for exercises. I, I'm very convinced of that. And I'm tired of being the fat and tired and grouchy woman that I am and I'm sure my husband is really tired of me having such bad mood swings and being super grouchy uh, it'll probably help with my migraines as well um, because I did notice that after I ate corn yesterday which shouldn't have had corn um, but after I ate corn that's when my migraine started maybe maybe corn is a trigger for my migraines and I need to just cut it out completely not even as a cheat guess we're gonna find that out on the whole 30 let's see if I get any migraines all right let's see so increased energy to strengthen my immune system um, I am sick a lot I a lot of the times just 
I don't feel well, my allergies will act up, I'll have a sinus infection, I'll get a stomach bug. If there's anything going around the room um, at work, I will, if there's anything going around the school at work, I'll get it. I catch it. And I see all these girls that are going and eating well and working out and they don't get sick. And you think about the fact that they put all this great food in their body and it's like medicine. Your your body's going to take care of you if you take care of it. But if your body's having to fight off all the chemicals that you're putting into your body, it doesn't have time to sit there and fight off sicknesses. And I mean, it might even welcome a sickness because that gets you to stop and you're going to rest and it gives your body time to recuperate and from everything you're doing to it. And that's just a horrible thought to think. It really is. But I mean, that's it's got to be true, right? Like, it's got to. I don't know for sure if that's true. That's just my thought on that. Um, another thing that obesity can kind of exacerbate a little bit is depression. And I, a few years ago, was diagnosed with clinical depression. I am no longer on medicine because it did really weird things to me, but I noticed that as I was gaining more weight, I became more depressed and everything just, all of my sadness and my anger was just heightened and, you know, I could put on a brave front in front of everyone else, but when I'm alone in my house or when I'm with my husband, I just, I can have a mental breakdown and I will cry at the drop of a hat and it's just, I, there was times I will, I would cry for absolutely no reason and my husband would ask me what was wrong and I couldn't tell him because as far as I knew there was nothing wrong. It was just, you know, just everything just all at once and it's just, it, it was bad. It's just, it's bad. And if losing weight can make me have less symptoms of depression or be completely done with depression, I will gladly welcome that because I am tired of the mood swings and feeling sad all the time. And um, luckily I am out of the stage to where I used to think about killing myself. Um, but I don't also don't want to get back to that stage. And if making healthier choices and becoming a better version of me can keep me from getting back there, I will. I will do everything I can to stay away from it. Um, another reason that I really, really want to do this is to reach my goals and to prove to everyone, including myself, that I can do it. Um, one of my biggest motivators has always been when people tell me that they don't think I can do that or, or this is just another fad that you're going through, um, stuff like that. You know, the, I feel like a lot of the time the only reason I even graduated high school was because I was told several times throughout my life that I was never going to, I was never going to graduate even from high school, I was never going to go to college. Um, that I was going to end up pregnant by the time I was 16 and then have like five baby daddies, um, which obviously didn't happen because I am 28 years old and I don't have any kids. Um, I haven't been with that many people, not even close to being with five or six people, but that's what I was told and that gave me motivation to get through high school and I did start college. I didn't finish, unfortunately. Um, ended up moving from New Mexico to Texas, went back to college for a little while and then dropped because I had to choose between work and school and I decided to stay in, at work rather than going to school, um, which thinking about that now, I probably should have stayed in school, but oh well. Um, but yeah, so more people that are against me, the more I'm going to want to do it. And I'm going to do it. I'm doing it this time. Even if it's just me that I'm proving wrong, I'm doing it. Okay, so 
The next one is to feel healthy. So I feel like this is a completely different thing than having your immune system um, better and, and looking good. Feeling healthy is a whole different category on its own. You know, it's that it's I don't want to say pride, but it's sitting there and knowing that you are doing all you can to make yourself what you can you know you can be um i see something online all the time about how it's it's sad when a woman grows old and never knows the full potential of her own body and i want to know the full potential of my own body i do and that's a big reason as to why i'm doing this because i want to feel healthy i want to be able to run without having joint pain. I want to be able to go to the pool without feeling self-conscious about uh, my cellulite on my legs or the way my arms jiggle in a tank top. Um, thank you, dog, for sitting on my notes. But that's just, that's just how I feel. That's what, that's how I want to feel. I want to have self-confidence and feel healthy because I'm putting work into it and I'm I'm putting healthy ingredients into my body and then I'm using the calories that I need to make my body look the way I want it to look. All right. The next reason I want to do this is to learn self-control. I have none. I don't. I am very weak-willed. And every diet that I've ever been on has probably failed because I don't use my no muscle enough. And I want to change that. So this next 30 days is literally going to be me working on my self-control and learning how to say no to myself. I will not veer off course. I will not eat things I'm not supposed to. I will go to the gym. Um, I should have gone to the gym today, but I was suffering with that migraine. I did do a little 15 minute workout, but that made the migraine worse. And I ended up just laying back down afterwards. Um, so of course there is going to be those exceptions, not with the diet, but with the workout. Um, but I'm going to learn how to say no. And by doing that, maybe I'll learn how to say no to other people and other situations because there are things in my past that I feel like I should have said no to and I didn't. And I regret that completely. And that's... If you learn how to say no in one area of your life, you can get better at saying no to other areas. And I feel like saying no to food is a stepping stone to saying no to other bigger things. So, self-control and self-respect. And my last reason, and this is where it gets a little bit more personal, um, my last reason is for fertility. Um, for those of you who have been friends with me for a while, you'll know that I have been pregnant a few times. Um, the most recent was uh, September of last year. I found out September 7th, 2016, that I was pregnant, um, but I was having some spotting I called an OB and they said that that was normal um, for some women. I think there's a certain percentage of women that just have spotting the, the first couple of months of their pregnancy and then it goes away. Um, September 9th, I had an appointment to go confirm the pregnancy and I ended up bleeding a lot more than just spotting. and. They still did the test and confirmed that I was pregnant and then told me that if I, more than likely I was going to lose the baby, but if I wanted to, I could go to the hospital and they could see if there was anything that could be done. And so we went to the hospital that night and I was told that I was at a threat of miscarriage. Um, there was really nothing that they could do other than wait and see what was going to happen. A week later. September 16th of 2016 I lost my baby that I had been trying for for three years and they can't tell me why 
because my ovaries look fine and my uterus looks fine and sometimes it just happens but in my heart of hearts I know because I did not take care of myself I was not able to take care of my child and the hardest thing to think about is the fact that more than likely it was because I overate and I ate junk and I failed my child and I couldn't protect my child because I was selfish I was too selfish to take care of myself so that I could take care of my baby. And that's what I want to change because I don't want to go through this anymore. I've had to sit there and watch three of my babies die. For what the doctors will say is no reason. That they just can't tell me. It's just unexplained infertility. I had one, one doctor tell me I had a hostile uterus and then when I mentioned that at the hospital they said that they had never heard of such a thing and then when I went to my OB they said that my uterus looked just fine and everything looked fine and there would be, there should be no reason that I could not conceive in a healthy child and carry my pregnancy to term but the look on my doctor's face when I looked at her and I told her that I needed to lose weight and I knew I was fat and I needed to change that she, the look on her face confirmed it that that's what I needed to do between that and I am very vitamin D deficient so I need to get that taken care of as well um, which I'm working on that. I take a vitamin D supplement every day because unfortunately I am so white that if I go out into the sun I will burst into flames. Um, literally will look like a marshmallow melted on the sidewalk. So that is my number one reason for all of this. Um, it probably sounds very contradictory. Let's get super skinny and see about becoming a fitness model and then let's get pregnant and get fat. Uh, but that's my number one goal in life is to be a mom and I'm going to be a mom one way or another if God wants me to have a child naturally I will um, I feel like getting my body to where it needs to be is going to give God the I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for the vessel that he needs to carry my child and he's waiting for me to do what I need to do so he can do what he needs to do. Um, that's just my thought process on that. Now I do have a couple of statistics that I want to sh share with y'all. I did have this big old long thing of statistics but I'm not going to go through all of that. Um, I'm just going to go through what the ones that I feel are the most important. Um, so For every 5.5, oh wait, okay, so every quartile increase in your BMI, your risk of miscarriage goes up 5.5 fold. And it also doubles your risk of having a stillbirth or needle, neonatal death. I knew a woman on a Facebook page, um, a try, uh, trying to conceive Facebook page, um, didn't know her personally, but she was part of, I think she was one of the admins. She was pregnant with triplets and they ended up being stillbirths at, I think they were like four or five months. And seeing the heartbreak on her face, that just says it all. Um, seeing a child like that is not something that any parent should have to go through and if by being fat you're increasing that risk you're just increasing the risk of hurting yourself more than anything else 
because that's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking losing a child. Um, uh, 54% of women with reoccurring miscarriages, it's because they're overweight or obese. Um, simply by being overweight, you increase your chances of miscarriage by 29%. And by being obese, you increase it by 67%. Now, if you are obese and you're someone who needs assistance to get pregnant, you're increasing your chances of losing your child by 1,330%. So if you have PCOS or any other infertility issue, and you keep putting junk in your mouth and you're not taking care of your body and you're treating your body like crap, you're increasing your chances of losing a baby significantly. It's horrible. Um, miscarriage rates in women with PCOS increase nine times, even if the fetus is healthy. I would hate to think that my baby is completely healthy and just because I'm I mean because that's how I feel already but I mean for all I know because I'm not a doctor for all I know that there was this this big old issue I'm not God there could have been an issue with my child that made me lose my last child and it's horrible to sit there and think that because I'm overweight my baby's dead. But that's the issue. That is the that is the thought that goes through my head all the time. And it's horrible that women who continually have miscarriages aren't seeing the connection between their weight and the way they treat their body and the fact that they can't carry a baby to full term. It's they're not connecting it, and that's horrible. Um and if you're somebody who has to have assistance getting pregnant, so if you want to try in vitro, let's say that you've tried several years naturally and still can't do it, but you decide you want to do in vitro or IVF, um, simply by being obese, you lower your success rate by 67%. 67%. That's a lot. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not about to go and waste, I think it's about $1,000 to $2,000 to have IVF, but I'm not about to go and waste all that money just to have it fail because I didn't take care of myself. At some point, I would like to have a child naturally. Um, I will adopt if I can't, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I have come to terms with that. However, I would hate to think that I didn't try every avenue. So once I'm healthy, if IVF is an option and I'm still unable to conceive naturally, I will go through that route and hopefully be successful because I've changed and taken care of my body. Well, that's all the statistics that I'm going to give y'all today. Um, <laughs> and this video's been quite long and I've rambled on enough and taken up enough of your time. So I hope that everyone has a great week. And um, I hope that I have inspired someone, anyone out there, to take this step. If you want to learn more about the Whole30, um, go ahead and send me a message on any of my social media pages and I can send you the information that my friend Carrie sent me. Um, I think that's it. So God bless, take care, and uh, I'll see y'all next week.